Dear viewers, this is yet another video trying to answer your queries which are posted in the comment section. In today's video, we are going to discuss about NRI's interest in agricultural land and whether NRI's can buy agricultural land in India, if they can buy, who can buy, what are the limitations which exist and everything that you need to know about your interest in the agricultural land. This is NRI Money Clinic for you and I am Dr. Chandra Khan but investment consultant and a financial planner. NRI Money Clinic. No hype, just the right advice. Dear viewers, you have asked a lot of questions about agriculture land. A lot of NRIs are interested to buy agriculture land. You have asked me to find out how can I buy agriculture land, what are the rules and regulations that I have to follow and what is the do's and don'ts about buying an agriculture land in India. I have collated all your questions and I have brought to the studio my eminent faculty chartered accountant Sri Ram Rao to answer your queries. Mr. Sriram Rao, as you all know, is a familiar figure here on the NRI Money Clinic. He is a practicing chartered accountant, a partner at Nitin J. Shetty & Co., a specialist in NRI affairs, a specialist in direct tax. And Mr. Sriram Rao has to his credit solving many of the tax issues pertaining to high net worth individuals spread across the globe. Welcome to this show, Mr. Sriram Rao. Thank you. Mr. Sriram, the interest of uh, NRIs when it comes to question of agriculture land plantation is mind boggling. Uh, our NRI community lives outside of India but they are so grounded that they everybody wants to buy agriculture land. True. Let us in this episode try to explore all kinds of issues we need to discuss on and what is that the NRI community should know about and try to give an answer to the queries they are have raised. Definitely. My first question to you is, when we talk about the agriculture land, can you tell what all the things which are covered under the category of agriculture land, whether it's only agriculture land, what else is covered under that? All types of agriculture land, including plantation properties, including farmhouse, everything is covered when it comes to, you know, agriculture land and uh, acquisition or sale or transfer of that. Uh, by a non-resident or a overseas citizen of India. Okay. So, so it's just not pure agriculture. No, no. There is plantation, farmhouses, yes. everything. Are everything included. is covered, and all these rules are framed under uh, Foreign Exchange Management Act (FEMA). Acha. Presently, that uh, act governs all these uh, rules. So, buying of agriculture land and everything is restricted by yes. the provisions of FEMA law. Correct. Okay. And the next question is. First of all, tell me, can an NRI buy agriculture land? What does the FEMA law say about it? NRI or an OCI, okay. they cannot buy agriculture land in India. Okay. It is entirely prohibited under FEMA. So, you have closed the topic in the beginning itself. Yes. So, I was, I was hoping that you will give me some solution where my NRI community can come buy some uh, agriculture land, they are so much interested into it and you outright say it's just not possible. Not possible at all. They, they cannot purchase, they cannot take it as a gift. Okay. The only way in which they can acquire an agriculture land, plantation property or a farmhouse is by way of inheritance. Achha. Inheritance is when, when the person dies by yeah. by the transfer to the next generation he has yes. inherited that's the yes. only possibility where they can uh, have an agricultural land exactly because otherwise that they have to quit that nri status come back and buy it yes absolutely because inheritance is the only way of acquisition because that is out of their control okay yeah yeah that is <laughs> yeah it it's not under their control Correct. it cannot be planned yes it cannot be planned at all so all the other trans transactions can be planned so, no planning and plotting, it is a straight away no, a non-resident or an OCI cannot purchase an agriculture land by whatever uh, way other than inheritance. You mean to say, if somebody has done, they have violated a FEMA law? Absolutely. 
Absolutely, they have violated. And the draconian provisions of FEMA law are there yes. to catch them. Yes, absolutely. So, NRA community should shy away from even thinking about buying agricultural land or a plantation crops or kind of a thing. Yes. The only possibility is an inheritance. Correct. Now, here I would like to, you know, give one small fine uh, tuning for this. Say, if at all a NRI or an OCI purchase this um, agricultural land or plantation property or whatever, after, on or after 1st June 2000, the year 2000. Okay. Because from that day onwards, this FEMA law is in existence. So, there is a cutoff date here. Yes. 1st June 2000. 2000. Okay. After that, if they have purchased, that is a clear cut violation of FEMA law. FEMA law. What, what if somebody has purchased, he was an NRA and purchased prior to this cutoff date? Correct. Now, prior to this cutoff date, instead of FEMA, there was one more act called as FERA, Foreign Exchange Regulation Act. That was there with the, uh, from existence from 1st of January 1974. Okay. Till 31st of May 2000. So, in that period, there was some leniency mm -hmm. as far as a non-resident purchasing agricultural land. Okay. okay. OCI could not have purchased because an Indian citizen can purchase an agricultural land. That was mentioned in the FERA. So, FERA was more lenient. It allowed purchase of uh, agricultural land by an Indian citizen who could be an NRA. Correct. But if you are an OCI, you are not an Indian citizen. Even under FERA, you are not allowed. Yes, if you have violated FERA. Right. But 1st June 2000 onwards from the enactment of FEMA law, Correct. even an NRA cannot buy an agricultural Correct. land. Correct. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, no rules at all except inheritance. Yes. Now, you said that an NRA cannot buy agricultural land. Our NRA community is very intelligent. They are asking me the question, can I buy this as a joint account holder? The, the joint account holder is a resident Indian and I am the other person. So, I owning agricultural land is prohibited. Can I do it as a joint account with one of the resident Indians? No, absolutely not. That is also prohibited, expressly prohibited. Even that loophole is not yes, there? Yes, not there. Okay. Mr. Shira, yeah. you told one way is that uh, NRI can inherit the agriculture land. Are there any finer points to know about it or is it as straight as that, okay, I can inherit the land? See, there is uh, not much a uh, uh, difficulty in inheriting an agriculture land, but uh, there is one small finer point one need to know is, if a person being a resident, a non-resident or an OCI, acquiring agriculture land by way of inheritance, hmm. then the person from whom he is getting in inherited these properties should have bought or acquired that agricultural land as per the FEMA or FERA. Okay. Which was in existence uh, when he bought that particular land. Meaning thereby, so if a resident in India is always eligible to purchase or acquire agricultural land but by whatever means. So, if as an NRI you are inheriting the uh, agriculture land from a resident in India. No issues. No issues. Okay. However, if you are inheriting a agriculture land from a non-resident in India or from a OCI, then one need to see how he has acquired that particular uh, land and when he had acquired that particular land and when he acquired that particular land, he should have uh, not violated uh, FEMA and FERA. Okay. So, the person whom, from whom you are inheriting this agricultural land should have bought it in accordance with the law. Yes. Uh, which is prevalent Very. at that point of time. Absolutely. Uh, if he is a resident Indian, no questions asked because he is eligible. Yes. But if you are inheriting an agricultural land from another NRI, then it has to be seen whether that NRI has acquired this in accordance with the FEMA law or the FERA law which is applicable at the time of transaction. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. So, if the, he has violated the law, then even in inheritance is not possible. Yes. Yes. Correct. 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 Now that the rules have been made so stringent that NRI cannot buy it, only inheritance is a possibility. Correct. Human nature always looks for alternatives. How I can do it without violating the law or can I find a loophole of law by which I can acquire the agriculture land? Some people have asked me, what if I, you know, go back to India, 
uh, stay for more than 182 days and I will become a resident Indian. Can I buy agriculture land, come back and resume my work? Or somebody asks me, can I remit money to my brother or my wife or my parent, give the money and they buy it and in turn at a later point of time, they gift me back, uh, all these kind of a thing. Or, or in a way to say, you will be the ultimate beneficiary of buying the land, but you are trying to do it in a tortuous way, going, going in an alternate way, trying to find a loophole around the law. Yes. Now, if somebody tries to do this, it's a possibility. How will the law treat such transactions? Under FEMA, there is a broad line, guidelines. Okay. What cannot be done directly under FEMA, that cannot be done indirectly also. Oh, that's that's very broad terminology. Yes, yes, absolutely. So, if one person being a non-resident or an OCI cannot purchase an agricultural land or a plantation property or a farmhouse, then he cannot do it in a you know deviated manner. Say, he goes and stays in India for 182 days, becomes resident as per FEMA, then immediately purchases a land, agricultural property. Then again, uh, he goes back outside of India, becomes a non-resident. No, that is not permitted. That is also a violation. Mm. Because this is like you are trying to evade something purposefully. You are trying to create a situation Correct. to favor that particular move. Absol absolutely. So, same way you are gifting money to your parents and from the, uh, they are buying the land, agricultural land in their name, then you are trying to inherit. So, that is also prohibited. Yeah, parents did not have the means to buy that land. Exactly. They could have bought this land only with your contribution. Exactly. And you would have contributed with the ulterior intention that it will be transferred back to you at some point of time in true, future. True, true. So, if it is questioned, it becomes very difficult for somebody to prove that uh, they have not done it with any uh, ulterior uh, motive yes. behind this. And yes. this clause to say that what is not permitted in a direct way can never be permitted in an indirect, indirect way. Manner. And the tax authorities have an upper hand in this particular case. You will struggle to explain these things. So, yes. don't even think about trying to do these things in indirect way, remitting money to somebody, buying in somebody's name, gifting it, going back to India, buying this. Please avoid this. Yes. Okay. It, is, it, it always makes sense to uh, stay on the right side of the law, consult the professional, see if it is permitted or not. If it is not permitted, then what is the point in chasing something which is not meant for you? Correct. Correct? Absolutely. Right. There are some instances where a person has bought agriculture land. Okay. He was a resident Indian at that time. Okay. By circumstances, he becomes an NRA at some point of time in future. True. So, what should he do? Should he sell this land or will he be entitled to keep this land with him? Uh, what does the law say about that? See, when he was a, a resident Indian, genuinely, Okay. And he has bought agricultural land or planted property, whatever. And of course, as you said, due to circumstances, he becomes a non-resident or a OCI. Still, he can hold and continue to hold even uh, when he was, he is an NRA or an OCI, all these agricultural land which he had bought in accordance with law. Okay. So, that can be continued to be hold and if he wants to sell, he can sell it. But he can sell only to a resident in India. Yeah, and he can gift also to a resident Indian. Yes, he can. But he cannot gift it to another NRA. No, absolutely not. It could be relative friend, whoever it is. He can't gift it to another NRA. You can continue to hold, or you yes. can continue, or you can sell it to another resident. Indian. Yes, these are all permitted transactions. Yes. So because you became an NRA because of circumstances, yeah. what you have purchased when you are a resident Indian hmm. will not be questioned or will not be asked to part with. No. Because of change of uh, your resident status. No. Correct? Correct. Yes. Absolutely. Mr. Sriram, uh, there are a lot of people who have bought agricultural land as NRS. Hmm. It could have happened out of ignorance. It could have happened by suppressing the fact. Hmm. It could have happened out of intention, whatever could be the circumstance. Hmm. Now that they have done and now they know that there is a hanging sword of FEMA law hanging above them. What can they do about it? How can they sort out this mess? First of all, if you have violated any person uh, for that matter, if they have violated FEMA law, they should regularize it. 
regularize it means they have to make it right okay if in the case of an agricultural property which he has bought as a non resident or oci then uh, by selling it to a resident in india he would be regularizing his transaction that is the first condition hmm. so he has to regularize this transaction by selling that property or gifting that property to a resident in india this is the first and the foremost condition hmm. so after regularizing his transaction he can um, approach the authorities rbi authorities and plead guilty saying that you know uh, quoting proper reasons why he has done maybe by ignorance or whatever it is then plead guilty and ask for compounding of the offense so while compounding the offense they would you know listen to the reasons what you have given if they find it genuine then they will allow you to compound the offense and uh, levy you a compounding fees there is again the way to calculate the compounding fees it depends on the quantum of transaction the amount involved in the transaction the period of violation etc so they will levy you a compounding fee pay the compounding fee and come out of this you know mess what has happened uh, maybe by ignorance or whatever okay that is an option which is there for somebody who yes. is pleading guilty correct but somebody doesn't mention anything about it he carries yeah. on with this correct and he gets caught yeah and he is served with a notice then yeah. what happens then there Can, will be uh, at that point of time is compounding possible uh, at the beginning again again it depends on factor and circumstances if he has not approached the authorities earlier why he has not approached so all these things you need to prove properly with the documentary evidence and also compounding is possible when the first notice is received you need to explain to the authorities why and under what circumstance all these things transactions have happened and then uh, go for compounding even uh, after receipt of notice if you are not responding and all then automatically the authorities have a you know power to levy penalties and that can penalties can go up to the level of 300% of the amount involved in the transaction so it's a very heavy trans uh, heavy penalties what the authorities can levy on this so one if you have violated make sure you have to sell this property back to a resident in india correct no excuse on that you can't say that okay at some point of time i'll feel guilty and i'll plead guilty and i'll retain my agriculture land pay no. a compounding fees that's not possible not possible so if it is an offense it has to be resold back to a resident indian compounding fee has to be paid in addition the taxman has an authority to levy a penalty to an extent of 300% and we have seen quite a number of yes. rulings under this that the authorities are extremely harsh when it comes to correct. question of correct. family law right correct correct absolutely so it's not worthwhile to attempt all these things by devious methods if it is not permitted by law it's best left at that stage and not to venture into that that's probably the wisest thing that you can think of now in case of some of the nras they are in a peculiar situation situation in that sense they have acquired this agricultural land when they were resident indians now they have become nris or they have become ocis they have no intention to come back to india now if they sell such agriculture land which they have genuinely and lawfully acquired during their status as a resident indian can the money be repatriated outside of india for such transaction if an nri or oci has acquired that property in accordance with the fema or fera as per you know uh, as per the time and in, in which they acquired whatever the law was prevailing if it is in accordance with that law when they sell that to a resident whatever the funds what they are going to get after payment of tax remainder funds they can always repatriate okay so there is no um, bar on that however there would be certain procedural issues which needs to be taken care of but they can always repatriate the funds okay. however if the property is acquired in not accord not in accordance with the law then you can't even after paying compounding fees we have seen cases that you will not be allowed to repatriate such funds outside okay. of india so if your intention is to repatriate this funds some of the things that you have to keep in mind is that the property should have been 
legally acquired correct. in a correct way then only the repatriation is possible if there are taxes that have to be paid in india you need to be paying the taxes yes the rest of the amount can be repatriated subjected to the conditions like a liberalized remittance yes. scheme or 1 million dollars correct based on the regulations of the day you can repatriate this particular money but if the property is acquired in an illegal way if you are not allowed to do it as per the law there is no chance that you can repatriate this money outside of india yes dear viewers hope this video has answered all the questions that you have asked in the comment section about agricultural land whether you can buy whether you can uh, keep it if you have acquired it in a wrongful way what you can do about it we have tried our best to answer all your questions hope the episode was useful to you if it helped you to answer all the questions that were there in your mind please like this video if you are a person who is watching this channel for the first time or if you are yet to subscribe for this channel please hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon don't forget to share this video with your near and dear ones thank you very much for watching this episode on nri money clinic i shall be back with you with yet another topic in yet another video very very soon press the bell icon for more details and subscribe our channel